Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Welcome to the March 13, 2013 Lorain County Board of Commissioners meeting. Commissioner Kirkowski has the dog this morning. It's not quite a dog yet. <laughs> <laughs> One of the cutest little puppies we've ever had. It's uh, about four to uh, eight weeks old, six to eight weeks old. Boxer, boxer mix. Uh, very calm, has a great little personality, just cuddling up here. Um, makes somebody a great pet. She's not going to be available. It is a female. She's not going to be available until Saturday in case her owner comes to find her. I can't imagine not coming to find this little cutie. So come down to the dog kennel on Saturday and pick her up or come see what other dogs we have. We have 21 dogs to choose from. So isn't she a cutie? Look at her. She is so sweet. She's sleeping. She, I'm just going to hold her for the rest of the day. <laughs> Thank you. Madam Clerk. Okay. Um, job and family bills. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Williams. Aye. Investments. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. There are no advances or repayments today. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Yeah, Kalo? I was looking oh, at excuse the me. adult probation. They had three vehicles. It was uh, 56 or 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And um, just wanted to bring up for discussion, maybe we want to. Uh, hold this one. I thought maybe they would have been over here, but they're looking at these vehicles. We have vehicles in our fleet that are underutilized. Instead of them getting new vehicles, maybe we could go through and transfer some vehicles from the commissioner's fleet over to adult probation. Mr. Cordes, do we have additional fleet vehicles that we could give up and give to them? Well, Commissioner Williams and I have had uh, several discussions on on the vehicles over the last year or so, and <clears throat> I don't believe we have excess vehicles, and I've, I've told him that. And the, the, uh, but we differ on on that. The they're not always utilized, and there's days when there's, and there could be several days when they're not being utilized. But when I have to have four or five vehicles, I have to have four or five vehicles. That's why some of them are older, they're still in ra rather good shape, but they have a little miles on them. <clears throat> we have vehicles from the late <coughs> mid '90s that we're still using. And um, so we would have to be able to provide transportation for people that when they needed it, when this, things were compressed, or we have to come up with a different policy on reimbursing for, for mileage. Because what am I supposed to tell people when they come up and they want to check out vehicles I don't have any? Well, I, I know <coughs> it's not that we just have four or five vehicles. We have uh, a lot of vehicles, what I believe uh, 19 vehicles, that's not correct. I don't think there's 19 in the fleet. There's only one vehicle, it's, right? It's 
just to clarify that. Okay. Yeah, it's um, three different phones. It's, yeah. They're purchasing one vehicle, but they're buying out of three separate accounts. That's right. why there's three separate requisitions in there. Right. It's not right. three vehicles. But they have the money in their grant budget. funds. Yeah. Pardon me? It's grant funds yeah, that they're using, but they're oh, splitting the cost between the three grants. Okay. Right. For one vehicle. But we can still talk about the vehicles. I mean, mm -hmm. right. yeah, I'm not talking about right. them looking at that many vehicles. It's just our fleet. But, uh, you know, we have vehicles that are um, from the 90s that have, you know, 20,000 miles on it. Some of them that are 40,000. So they're low. They all go mileage. Low mileage vehicles for the uh, age. So they're rarely being used. Most of it is just inner travel. Uh, so possibly mm -hmm. looking at what the state does or even the federal government, where instead of having a large fleet, actually doing reimbursement uh, for it. Um, well, didn't know, we do that? Four or five years ago, that question came up, and we had issues with Corsa and making sure all of our employees well, had there, riders on their personal policies. There, there's several issues. And, and this is the first time this was broached. Well, there's several issues, and Commissioner Williams and I w walked to a few of them last night. Uh, one would we we would have to be an identified insurer on their policy, uh, and people that drive their vehicle on behalf of their employer want that because they don't want to be denied coverage nor do we want to be the coverage of first choice uh, should they not have a waiver on their policy. Um, secondly, we can't force somebody to use their own vehicle on county business. Uh, and third, we have to come up with a reimbursement policy because presently we don't have one. We only have several identified people that are allowed to use their, their own vehicle and everybody else is delegated, uh, relegated, excuse me, to the, to the fleet vehicles. Uh, I don't know that we have 19 available. Well, I can recheck what's actually in the fleet that gets checked out. We have some vehicles that do not get checked out that are used uh, in the course of other business. Uh, but uh, Commissioner Williams is, in my mind, we, we're both agreeing to some point. Uh, we do have all the vehicles with low mileage on them, and we do take pretty good care of them. Uh, it could be a burden. I mean, we have to run them to the shop. and do those things with them, uh, but absent having a way of letting somebody do their business when they need a vehicle, I don't know what else to do. I, I know with like the state auditor, uh, everyone that works for the auditor's department, they don't get state vehicles. They use their personal vehicles and then they get reimbursed mileage. And we had this discussion. Now the auditor, maybe it's too low, I believe it's under 40 cents a mile. Uh, federal uh, government congressmen with their employees, they get reimbursed at 56 and a half cents, but they're using their own vehicle. Didn't you, uh, mm -hmm. didn't you develop a policy of like three cents a year ago? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, a, we have this uh, uh, fleet of vehicles that aren't being utilized. So it's either start utilizing the vehicles or maybe start shrinking them. I, I agree. Most good. of the mileage is in and about. Uh, it's Northeast Ohio mileage, right, right around Lorraine and Cuyahoga, and, and uh, occasionally the trips to um, Columbus. But other than that, we're not doing a lot of highway miles on those vehicles. Never have. Yeah, and you know, for trips to Columbus and that where you're going at from point A to point B that are over a certain mileage, I think it would even be cost effective to even take a look at just getting a rental car instead of having paying for the insurance, the mm -hmm. maintenance, and everything that goes on it. There's, there's places that do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I know of a couple agencies that uh, allow that. Some people don't want to put 500 miles on their on their vehicle. They got a lease vehicle, and they don't want to put the miles on it because, in the end of the day, by the time we reimburse them, they lose money. They lose money. Uh, all those things have to be taken into consideration in any policy that's adopted. Uh, I'm not saying it can't be done. It yeah, I'm certainly not saying, can be. And one thing I'm not saying is that we have to get rid of all the vehicles. There are going to be cases where you do need to have vehicles. Um, you know, we spoke about this yesterday, actually, um, but actually reducing the size and then. Uh, taking a look at, I know domestic relations, I was having to talk with them. They go through, they do a lot of reimbursement of their uh, mileage. Um, they also have vehicles now that are in need too. Um, she was telling me that they could use one of our vehicles. Um, they have a transmission that just came, that went out to do the repairs is gonna be uh, more costly than what the value of the vehicle is too, so. For as far as vehicles goes, I, I, so we're clear with the public, we haven't bought any new vehicles in a lot of years and the last ones that I purchased for the fleet were stripped down Ford Focuses. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not driving around out there in Crown Vicks and, and uh, you know, fully loaded vehicles. We bought the least costly vehicles we could and, 
and probably in the ugliest color I've ever seen too. So uh, <laughs> they're not they're not highly desirable vehicles. And Janice actually works with checking the vehicles out when she's not performing her many other tasks. Mm -hmm. And there are days when we don't have enough vehicles. You can look to That's her. True. She she checks them out. There are days. Mm -hmm. uh, how many days out of the year would you say that occurs? That would be hard just off yeah. the top of my head to really. Yeah. I mean, I could certainly take a look back at our records. But and what it comes down to is also doing the scheduling and that and taking a look. Um, at where the vehicles are being utilized. I, I know a lot of times just walking uh, the um, city of Valeria, you'll see the vehicles parked over at Moss's because they're having a meeting there. For, so some people will take the vehicle to drive over to Moss's. I'm not saying that's the uh, Our vehicles? Our vehicles. There's well, no, it says Lorraine no. County on it. Well, it could be from the county yeah, engineer's right. office. It could places. be, you know, anyway. yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're not checking vehicles out there to go to, to, to Moss's for a meeting or watch <laughs> or anything else. I, remember I told you, Commissioner, sometimes the way the public perceives what's right. said, you know, it, it, it says county doesn't mean it's under the auspices of the county commission. Right. I mean, all, all the county vehicles have the Lorraine County sticker on them. And, uh, so that vehicle, I, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to jump, take a leap of faith here. We didn't, nobody checked yeah. it out to drive the horses. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, I know when we went through the number that was on the vehicle, we couldn't actually locate because I did, I wrote down the vehicle number, brought it back, and we could not locate which fleet that belonged to. Well, if it had, if it had a county tag on it, we could find it for you. Well, I, I took a picture of the actual number on the side of the vehicle. Send it to me, and we'll chase him down with extreme prejudice. <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, again, you know, I don't want to leave a perception out there yeah. of those things happening. We, we haven't bought vehicles, I want to say, in probably I think the six last or seven one. years, six years? 2007 or 2008? Well, seven. So that would be six years. Six years yeah. ago. And those were focuses. We bought a bunch of them. And I remember. Uh, uh, one of the uh, senior prosecutor staff coming over and asking me how they were going to fit in that car, <laughs> uh, or how they're going to fit more than two people in that car. Uh, but <clears throat> we've made do with them uh, because of the economic situation where we bought the lowest cost alternatives. Well, we know it costs a lot to drive a car. I mean, when you figure the license plates and the insurance and all that, so maybe give us an idea of how much it costs to keep those cars just on a yearly, you know, average. And then if it would be beneficial to go with the route that Mr. Williams is talking about. Yeah, and just I, having people either rent a car or get paid reimbursement. I'll have me to give you that if I mean I look at the I look at the, the data. Um, but once again, I would caution that we're gonna have to be a named insured. Right. Jerry, you know I don't know much about how that works. Do you counsel can, can you yeah, we would well we would have to have coverage that uh, you're talking about our own policy. Well, I think they need to name us on their own oh lease. on the on the on the uh, individual insurance policies. Right. Um. Yeah, they have to get a. Yeah, a I don't know the exact deal, but you well, would have to get a rider that would. Uh, cover but you only them need a rider if you're going over so many miles, because I mean, let's take a look at private industry. Uh, you don't have to get a rider if you're using your vehicle to go from point A to point B, but you're still getting reimbursed for the mileage. Uh, I always had all my commercial vehicles and my personal vehicles. Well, and commercial. My employees as salesmen. Well, your your com company always carried business if they got in an accident. But your your salespeople, they're, they're using the vehicles, or they're using it to go from point A to point B multiple Correct. times. Well, not multiple I'm talking. Times, about, I'm talking about we don't need to have. All the employees aren't going to need to have riders if they're just going from, say, uh, one meeting. I, I don't know. Someone's got to go from here to City Hall in Lorraine. They're not going to need a rider on that. I, I couldn't tell you. Can check. Insurance would, co would cover them if they were to cause an accident. I, we can check on it. I, yeah. I don't know the specifics on it. The other thing, my, another big problem for me is workers' comp, portal to portal issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I, I always like when somebody checks out a vehicle to go somewhere because they now know they're on our time. Mm -hmm. If anything happens, and we we get a work, this way, we're, we're the <clears throat> they're within the scope of workers' compensation. We know when they reported to work and when they left work. Um, when they're using their own vehicles and something happens out there, they yeah. never know what is going to be claimed, where they were, and whose whose time they were actually on their own or ours. I, I certainly hate to get somebody backing out of their driveway saying I was going to go to a meeting over here on behalf of my employer, so it's a workers' comp issue when they get hit backing out of their yard. 
so there's a lot of those. I know that I'm not trying to put barriers up, but it's a lot more complicated than most people would think when you make those decisions. And the liabilities are can be significant. And then again, they may never materialize. Right. I just know, other, you know, we talked to other counties that have done this in the past. State level, they do it. Federal level, mm -hmm. they do They do. It. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just something to take a look at. I'm not saying it's the right way to go. It's just an option to take It'll a look at It just be in terms of employment issue with employees who drive their own vehicles. Right. Because if they've got a lease vehicle, again, they're not going to be driving their own lease vehicle. Mm -hmm. or an additional three or 4,000 miles here if they're on the road a lot. I'll try to get some you facts and figures for you. Time, yeah. Well, this is uh, this requisition is for one vehicle and right. it's grant, so you're okay with this now, or um, and just th the rest of it up for discussion. Um, I'll go ahead and approve this since it is with grant money. Uh, one thing I would like to do though is have them, if you could get with uh, domestic relations as well, and take a look if there is a vehicle that could um, help them out. I've offered quite a few vehicles over there over the years, so I'll, yeah. I'll certainly talk to my right, Deb. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Okay, under travel. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Bills. So moved. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Authorize various personnel actions as indicated on summary sheet for employees within jurisdiction of Lorain County Board of Commissioners. Mr. Cordes. Thank you, Commissioner Kalo. I do have a, a few personnel issues at Job Family Services, the Collection Center, uh, potential hires, and also uh, Golden Acres. And I would like to also to talk to you about the ongoing labor negotiations at the county home with the Teamsters, uh, and also the potential purchase of real estate. Uh, those three topics are allowable for executive session uh, discussions. So that's the conclusion of our regular board meeting today. We go into the executive session and we talk about those identified issues. Thank you. Okay, number 10, under solid waste, approve a request from Lorain County Community College, connect Lorain County a nonprofit organization for 25 refurbished computers to use every other month through September of this year to a maximum of 100 from the Solid Waste Management District. Mr. Bailey. Good morning, commissioners. First, a report a little bit about Connect Your Community, which was, went on from 2010 through 2012. We did uh, uh, college train 2,197 people in the computer classes for 25 hours each. Uh, we distributed 1,370 computers out of the center back to those people in need who needed a computer, needed a PC. So it was a very successful program. We're trying to salvage part of Connect Your Community, which was a federally funded, stimulus funded program. And with uh, Connect Lorraine County, which has now been organized by the college, they have two and a half full-time instructors now is still teaching, uh, connect your community and connecting people to the internet that don't have that training, don't have that access, senior citizens, people in need. And they're asking for 100 computers over the period of the year uh, from our program that we have successfully run now for 10 years. So that's what the request is for today, all right? So once they complete the computer training, class. then they, the class, then they are offered a computer if they right. need one. Right. Rebuilt by RET3, Job Corps in Cleveland, and uh, come through our office. Mm -hmm. Parts leave our building, go to Cleveland, reorganize, rebuilt, come back, and they're distributed back out. So. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under the engineer, instruct the clerk to advertise for proposals for the Lorain County Engineer's Office for the Whitney Road Bridge number 0214 replacement in Pittsfield Township. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Uh, number 12, approved to accept and journalize the 2012 report on bridges for Lorain County. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. 
Under the sheriff, authorize the sheriff to apply for the 2013 through 2014 drug use prevention program grant in the amount of $23,567.44, which represents 50% of the base salary of one DARE officer for the nine-month school year. Said local match is $23,567.44 to be paid from the account number sheriff's salary. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kahlo? Aye. Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Uh, Mr. Cordes? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, commissioners, with everything that's been going on down at the state with regard to the state budget and <coughs> pardon me, some of the restrictions that may be placed on the county, I've been taking a look at some of our bond issuances for the last few years mm -hmm. to see if we couldn't possibly find some refinancing opportunity to lower our overall cost, which is at is great but I'm, I'm doing that now because I'm worried that we may have a problem with our ratings later on if we lose the ability to indicate that we have piggyback tax left in reserve to raise revenue should the county uh, run into some significant difficulty uh, I have seen some testimony on that down down at the state uh, lately I don't know Commissioner Kahlo if you introduced it to the CCO after we spoke no they have they actually did a paper on it so okay. there's major concerns well, Kim yeah. Edwards from uh, Ashland County is Kim from Ashland. Kim Edwards was testifying on that last week. Well, it's it's a huge issue. You know, I've done the the county rating with the uh, with Moody's and Fitch's and Standard and Poor's now for over a decade and a half, and I know from working with them. And Commissioner Kelly, you've made some trips to uh, meet with them with me, and you know how pressing some of those rating uh, presentations can be with with regard to the questions and things they're looking at. Uh, with that, I do have one opportunity from a 2004 issuance uh, to save about $200,000 if we refinance some outstanding debt of about $3 million. Rates are historically low right now. We'll be able to net out $189,000 in savings. It's a general obligation, so that'll help us. Uh, it's not a, uh, uh, a sewer bond where uh, we don't receive any benefit, although I'm looking at those, if we can save those folks some money in their assessments. We should. Their assessments will just end a little bit sooner. Uh, so I'm going to be, I'll give you this uh, later today I want you take a look at it, but I'd like to put it on the agenda next week and you can look at the numbers, but I think it's time <clears throat> that we, we go to market with this uh, before we, we have to explain too much to the rating agencies what, what uh, may or may not be a problem this summer. 189,000 is over a 20 year Correct. period. Mm -hmm. The, uh, if, if you put back commission, you'll see the, the debt schedules right here. <coughs> and. No, it's not over 20 years. It's over the, it'll go for the. Just the balance of what's due right. on the note. So mm -hmm. 12 or 13 years, nine years, whatever it might right. be. Okay. Exactly. I, I don't see extending them out okay. any further. Well, we did that with the Justice Center notes, Correct. but with these, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. <coughs> but I'm, I'll get another copy of that and okay. I'll be looking at all of our bonds very closely this spring to see if we can find some mm -hmm. opportunities. Um, again, I, I'm not going into panic mode with this, but I think our, ability to do a refi is better right now than it may be in the summer, mm -hmm. given depending on what the state does. Right. Agreed. Uh, and I don't have any additional comments this morning. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Ennis. Commissioners, I have one matter of uh, pending litigation that I need to discuss in executive session. And then I would just mention, I have driven in one of those stripped down focuses. <laughs> Jim, Jim has under, I mean, you almost have to pedal with our <laughs> <laughs> Well, the re we do try real hard to stretch the dollars. And I think it was the last car they made with hand crank windows and everything else. And it is, it's not, not a lot of luxury there. At least it's automatic, right? <laughs> Barely. <Maybe. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> automatic, you had to pedal it. <laughs> Okay. I have no report this morning. Busy week. Uh, well, last Wednesday, the Board of Commissioners met with the Leadership Lorraine County class, had a nice hour-long forum. I'd like to thank them for asking us to participate. There was very good dialogue, very good questions. Uh, also had uh, Sheffield, Sheffield Lake Schools groundbreaking I attended. Uh, for the new high school, well, actually seven through 12, long-term project. 
Uh, congratulations on them finally moving forward on that. Commissioner Williams and I attended NAWACA this past week. Uh, a lot of discussion in regards to the turnpike. I'd like to thank Senator Manning and the Transportation Committee for adding the amendments in regards to 90% funding, staying north of Route 30. Also had Solid Waste Policy Committee meeting this week, uh, talking about not only the grants, hopefully everybody who hasn't turned in their grants yet. Keith, you want to help me out? Let's call them out. We're trying to give out the community grants based on the $300,000 formula based on last year's recycling numbers, and we have a few communities who have not yet turned in their numbers, and we can talk about them out here. Maybe they'll hear us. Yeah. Well, I don't have the list with me today, Commissioner, okay. but there are about six communities that have updated their recycling numbers, mm -hmm. and today the community grants are based on how much revenue we take in in the previous year, which we have a $300,000 pot. It's divided by the number of tons you recycle. So... The more you recycle, and if you don't get those numbers reported to us by April 1st, we're going to ha have to shut it off at that point, the policy committee, and send their recommendations down in the next April meeting. At so. that point, there'll be no disbursements to those communities who didn't report, and the $300,000 pie gets divided, divided amongst others. Yes. Amongst others who have done their jobs. So yes. if your community hasn't reported your numbers yet, please get it done, or there won't be any dollars forthcoming. Do we send them any? They, correspondence oh yeah, that? phone calls and everything okay. else. It was a long discussion yesterday mm -hmm. on that. Also uh, was invited to uh, Fligner's and Great Lakes Smoke Meat yesterday. Director Daniels from the Ohio Department of Agriculture was there honoring them during Farm to Table Week for the state of Ohio. Uh, Ron Pickworth, the president of the Farm Bureau, and Al Vincenzo and other staff were there. Uh, myself, Mayor Rittenauer attended. Congratulations them for all they do. There's new legislation passing. They'll start to be able to start selling their product out of state, not just within the state. So. Well, not a lot of people realize how, what a big employer Flagmans has become. Yep. They probably have about 125 employees now. Yep. So uh, they're, 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 not only are they a homegrown business, but they're, in this day and age, they're, they're one of our larger employers. I mean, state-of-the-art facility, they're doing some great things. They're in a lot of the grocery stores. You've been to the smokehouse, uh -huh. right, and all that stuff down there? plenty of times man still looking for my lamb from last year's county fair we can't quite figure out where it got put at after it got <laughs> slaughtered <laughs> they also own Kevill brothers in uh what's that huron county or erie county Kevill brothers it's right there at the split i'm, I'm not sure which county it's in but uh congratulations to them end of my report yeah uh as commissioner kale uh, stated we had the team our uh, leadership lorain county great event i uh, want to thank everyone that contacted me um, and I uh, want to apologize they weren't able to meet with them after hours at the, uh, uh, what's the restaurant now that's moved from? Sorrento's. Sorrento's, so great facility out there. But um, besides the NOAC meeting on Saturday, I actually attended the Wild Game Dinner at the Rochester Rod and Gun Club. Great event out there. Um, individuals had a wonderful time. Uh, coming up in May, they're going to actually have a uh, fundraiser for an individual from North Carolina, a child that's actually putting together uh, funds to help support the troops and that. So uh, I want to get more information. I'll let you know about that. They're going to be looking at trying to have different competitions. Um, I know, Ms. Kukowski, you talked about getting your CCW. might be a good time to go out there and practice. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of <laughs> do like a cowboy range out there. Uh, show off your skills with the uh, handgun and then also the money goes towards a good cause um, I had something else but I forgot my calendar so <laughs> I'll say it it's into my report <laughs> oh I'm sorry Senator Gail Manning I want to thank her very much Wednesday uh, last Wednesday meeting we had an individual to call about or came up here regarding the weight limit increase mm -hmm. they took care of that too. I spoke to her uh, Wednesday on it. Uh, she called me back on Monday, told me that uh, she received numerous calls from our sheriff, from our mayors, and from other commissioners throughout the, um, in her district, and they're looking at uh, changing that amendment. Still gonna have to go through and be voted on, but uh, she's in support of keeping it at, at the 80,000, so. They actually had a big turnout in discussion. I was reading the dispatch this morning and they had a big turnout against that. So there's only a couple of people who have self-serving interests who are introducing that legislation. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is right. against it. Well, and the, the thing that came down to is they said, 
it was going to bring jobs. Well, <coughs> where's your data to prove here's that? And uh, right, and if you can't do it, then you know it doesn't make sense to do it. Safety, additional uh, maintenance on the local roadways. Mm -hmm. I can see why it's going down, and hopefully they will vote that down. But um, um, good to talk with the Senator Manning and get all the information on what she's seen down in Columbus. So I appreciate her time, and um, appreciate everyone that did call her to um, voice their opinion as well. End of my report. Okay. Okay, board correspondence. Move the reading be waived. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kahlo? Aye. <clears throat> Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Public comment, anybody wishing to address the board? Sunshine Week, David. Thank you okay, for I knew it was mentioning close. that. Uh, David Ashenhurst Oberlin. Something that came up earlier and something I was not going to say um, brought up something else that I should say. Um, I was down in Columbus on the 6th of March for a statewide uh, lobby and education day on fracking and oil and gas interests and met with Senator Manning's staff and with uh, Representative Dan Ramos himself. I would have stopped in on Mr. Lundy, but it was also Public Library Day mm -hmm. and two other things, and he had an office full of people and uh, wasn't there for a sort of a spontaneous visit. I'm going down on, well, next Tuesday, I'm going to go from Chicago straight to Columbus for the League of Women Voters uh, Lobby Day, which is going to include some lobbying on fracking and stuff like that. Um, there are 33 chapters of the League of Women Voters around the state. Now that's not 88 chapters, but it is 33 of the counties. And it occurs, to, and I didn't this time go for the mental health lobbying day, and I didn't go this time for the environmental lobbying day. But it occurs to me when I go down there um, that I know a lot more about the County Commissioners Association than most of the other people that are around there. Um, it seems to me something I would suggest uh, all of you carry back to your colleagues at the uh, Commissioners Association, Republicans and Democrats, and people who are on in officer positions on the association and not, that it would really make sense for the government relations person from the County Commissioners Association to show up at some of these things, meet all these local people from around the state, and tell them what the County Commissioners Association is and what their priorities are that line up with the priorities of these various interest groups that are down there. Okay, David, um, let me interrupt you real quick. Uh, we have four different people who do government relations based on certain subject criteria. I There's understand. Not, I mean, Cheryl Subler oversees the entire department. She's I our, understand. Uh, probably the way the Commission Association does it currently, if you're looking for legislative priorities, and I introduce them every year here from the Commissioner's floor, I understand. is probably the website for those, maybe I, versus again, them going to see each and every group, because there's hundreds of groups. Well, there are <laughs> hundreds of groups, but they're not all statewide, and they don't mm -hmm. all... Um, have everybody around and I'm not saying that all four of them go and I'm not even saying that somebody go but you know on the on the literature table if there were an information sheet I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I know this isn't you know we're not there to meet our county commissioners and we don't expect any county commissioners to be with us but the fact that you've got people that are seeing your uh, legislative delegation and you don't know about it and they don't know you know what they're saying we don't all report these things to you but we're down there and we're talking about things that we also talk about you with and we talk with you about <laughs> um, but I guess what I'm saying is it seems to me that because the county commissioners have these priorities 
and they are shared with these local people who don't know anything about the commissioners, it just might make sense to make these individual grassroots lobbyists more aware that their county commissioners have priorities as well so that when we go see Dan Ramos we might know that the county commissioners have also met on this topic or have testified on it or something like that it just is because the state is organized by counties because there's a whole lot that happens that state law and county administered you know there is no county law there's just county enforcement of state law and all that kind of stuff that it would make sense to have a greater understanding by our local League of Women Voters of what the Commissioners Association is and what it thinks. Because um, we don't go see our, I, I mean none of us go see the Commissioners Association when we're down there and it's 33 counties at least that are going to be down there uh, next Tuesday talking about redistricting, talking about fracking, talking about sunshine laws and whatever else. It just occurs to me that just for you, for their governmental relations people to know that these meetings are going on and that probably there's an educational opportunity for the association with these local constituents to let them know what's already happening in their localities mm -hmm. would be a benefit mm -hmm. to the association and to its members. I'll convey that, David. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the board this morning? <coughs> I'll make the motion to go in executive session as outlined by the county administrator and assistant county prosecutor. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Kahlo? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorraine County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorainecounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.